Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to the DCS News for the 7th of December 2023. I hope you all enjoyed that uh, most recent Hornet video in my tutorial series, all about the SLAM ER. Uh, really quite similar to the, the previous one on the SLAM, however we've got some additional functionality there, and a, a more capable warhead. So um, yeah. Uh, I'm not even actually 100% sure what I'm going to choose for next week's video. There is still a bunch of stuff to cover in the Hornet, but those are the, the major uh, guided weapons covered now, you know, Slam Harpoon and Slam ER. So uh, I'm sure we'll find something fun to do next week, though. Uh, welcome to the stream, Zigzag, Storm Kimbari, Tog, Stevie B, James Fenton, Pink Floyd. Uh, Tog again. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, congrats on another trip round the sun. Yes, indeed. We made it. We made it to 2023. Uh, hello, Paul Dillon. Uh, hello, Dave Flute. Hello, Channel Right. Um, fantastic. Uh, and Griff Nizzle. Welcome. Welcome, everybody, to the stream. So, um... It has been kind of fun recently because we had the DCS 2023 and beyond video, which is what we're always looking for each year. We're looking to see what cool things they're going to tease and what new stuff they're going to uh, give us over the course of the next year or more. Um, so we'll be talking about that in a moment. Don't you worry. Uh, sup dudes, John Bloor, Mr. Yeti, welcome. Uh, oh, looking forward to my thoughts on multi-threading. Well, it'll be good. <laughs> Those are, that's like the entirety of my thoughts. My thoughts are, it's going to be good. I'm looking forward to it. Um, so, yeah, pretty much. Uh, welcome, LJ. Welcome, Channel Right. I love cruise missiles. Yes, yes. Uh, we have a pretty good cruise missile on the uh, Jeff as well, which I cover in my tutorial series for the Jeff. Uh, very similar to the original Slam, I would say. Hello, Leonet Cell. Hello, Nico. So, um, yeah, I, I'm actually, I'm happy to take some input from you all on, on a couple of things. One of them being, is there something specific in the horn that you would like to see next week? Um, I do still have a bunch of stuff to cover. So you know, I haven't covered um, recovery to the carrier. I haven't covered ACLS. Um, I haven't covered some of the air to ground stuff with the helmet mounted queuing system. The Hornet is a very, very complex and capable aircraft. And so there is still a bunch of stuff to cover there, but I'm very happy to be guided by your wants and needs. So uh, let me know if there are particular things that you'd like to see. Uh, welcome, Frank. Welcome, Joe. Uh, welcome, everybody. What a, what, a, what a fun gang you all are. Uh, and as everybody probably already knows, this is an interactive show. So chat, uh, I am monitoring you throughout the course uh, of the stream. Feel free to ask questions, make comments, uh, call me names. Uh, it's all it's all good. It's all good. Um, yeah, RR. <laughs> um, and then the other thing that I'm doing is a silly little thing that I did a while ago. Uh, just before Christmas, I made a bonus KA-50 Black Shark 3 video, and I told you all that if you got this video to 50 likes, I would immediately publish it. And I once again set this challenge for you all. Um, if during the course, well, even after this video, actually, to be honest, but, you know, if, if you could all go ahead and like the video, once we reach 50 likes, I will immediately publish a new Black Shark video. So, there you go. Uh, continuing to to whore myself as I often do. Uh, welcome Yogi. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Yeti. Uh, yeah, recovery to the carrier. Harrier one you did was uh, super helpful. Could do with the same for F eighteen. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll need to practice that a little bit to be honest because I'm not super good at landing the Hornet on the carrier, but I'm sure with a with a bit of time I can manage. Uh, addicted to harms. Yes, the F-18 uh, and the harm, very, very powerful. Uh, Razbam just released liveries for the F-15E YouTube video. Looks awesome. Yep, we're going to cover that just a little bit later. Don't you worry. Uh, let's get to 50 likes. Woo! It's not that many, and actually there are rather a lot of you, so I think we'll, we'll manage that without too much hassle. Um, so anyway, I will begin, uh, as always, with the uh, Eagle Dynamics newsletter. Dear fighter pilots, partners, and friends, we hope that you enjoyed the new year and holiday festivities and are looking forward to great things in 2023. We look forward to helping make this a year for all to remember in a good way. The DCS 2022 winter sale is still ongoing with a fantastic 50% saving. 
Um, yeah, that's ongoing until tomorrow. So yeah, I'm not going to repeat all of this, but yeah, you do still have the, the winter sale until tomorrow midnight. Uh, this year we'll see our substantial work on the DCS core being deployed in the near future. In addition to performance enhancements, we hope to make DCS an even more realistic and entertaining place to fly. Notable tasks include DLSS slash NIS, multi-threading, Vulcan API, Earth map, updated weather, improved FLIR maps, dynamic campaign, updated air traffic control, more and improved human animations for pilots and infantry, deck and ground crew, expanded multiple light sources, progress on voice chat, uh, new visual special effects, new bomb fuses, MAC shock cones, I'm looking forward to that, aircraft and ground AI improvements, and the general flight model. Please read the details below and note that these are the items that we will be working on in 2023 and not necessarily planned to be released in 2023. Make sure to watch the 2023 and beyond video, and we will do just that in just a moment, don't you worry. Uh, do, 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 do. Yogi, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, thank you very much, Yogi. That's very kind of you. I salute you, sir. That's very kind. Uh, Colin Kelly, hello. All excited uh, about all to come. Seems like maybe Korea map and Vietnam, unless that was already announced, and I missed it. Uh, this newsletter is an absolute chonker. Yet yeah, once we get to the core improvements, uh, my voice is probably going to get sore. Um, zigzag, looking forward to seeing the new B1 and B52 updates. Yes, yes. Uh, when will it be released? We don't know. Uh, they're looking very close to completion, though, so I would assume soon. Uh, welcome, Irish Pat. Welcome, Jep. Uh, welcome, Jay Vogel. I refreshed myself on the Mav E and F yesterday after not flying for quite a while. Used your Mav F video from eight months ago as my refresh. Uh, no T-Pod in training mission, so it was a pain in the ass. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, do, 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 happy New Year. Earth map and dynamic campaign both sound interesting. Yes, totally agree. Totally agree. So 2023 and beyond, we believe that 2023 will be a truly exciting year for all, with the introduction of eagerly awaiting modules like the DCS F4E by Heatblur, DCS F15E by Razbam, the DCS OH58D Kiowa Warrior by Polychop, uh, the F4U-1D Corsair by Magnitude 3, C-130J by the Airplane Simulation Company. Well done, guys, on a really unique name. <laughs> Uh, new Mirage F1 versions by Ergis, uh, Normandy 2 by Ugra, uh, Sinai Map by Onre Tech, and more. Please don't miss to watch our 2023 and beyond video. And then they want to remind us about the sale again. Um, doo -doo -doo. Hammy, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Colin Kelly, thank you very much. Um, yeah, uh, sorry, Yogi. Uh, sadly, no Dot Chuckles today. Uh, he has a very, very busy, busy work schedule, uh, but we might be seeing him sometime in a couple of months. Uh, don't expect to see him in January or, or February, most likely. Uh, Mr. Yeti, Wags replied to Growling Sidewinder Analysis video of 2023 and beyond, said some interesting things, so maybe worth taking a look. He said Vietnam was a thing, but not this year. Okay, very well. Um, so, without any further ado, let's take a little look. Sadly, with no audio, uh, but this video was created using DLSS and multi-threading, so that's a big one to note. Uh, I'm sure you've all already seen this, but I'm going to play it again anyway. We can all watch it together, and we can make comments and ask questions. Uh, do you know what variant of the F4 is coming? Multiple. Uh, I think they said that we're getting at least three different versions, and I forget exactly which ones they mentioned. Uh, but we, we have a few coming. Cool, 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 cool. So here's our Viking. S3B, there's a C-130, looking very nice inside the ramp. Uh, DLSS, um, Yogi, let me um, try my best to describe that in just a moment. Um, yep. Oh, welcome, Rick Bish. Welcome. Oh, beautiful F4. There we go. Thank you very much, Frantic Stone. That's very kind. There's the B-1B. And there's an F-16. We all like the F-16, of course. Super carrier module. The music's really good in these. It's a shame I don't get to play it. F-14, looking nice. I want the RF version of the F-4. I think we are getting... Actually, I don't think we're getting the RF version because the RF version was was up-engined and significantly 
kind of redesigned, so I'd be surprised if we get that one, sadly. Yes, remember to get the video to 50 likes if you want the next Black Shark video. Uh, I will post it the moment we hit 50. B-52 taking off with its crazy undercarriage. <laughs> F-15E Strike Eagle. Yeah, I I'm looking forward to the F-4 myself. It looks really nice. Just look at that. Stunning. Yeah, uh, I forget what this one's called, but we've got a, a, a funny version of the... a funny GBU here. Um, chat, if you, if you know exactly what this one's called, go ahead and give me a shout-out. But this is a new weapon in DCS for the F-15E. Definitely a Navy version. Probably a J. Uh, yeah. That was a lot of bombs on that Strike Eagle. Canadian C-130. I want to know who sits in this seat when the ramp is open. <laughs> World War II stuff, that's the Corsair. Oof, yeah. It's just a beautiful wing profile uh, on the F-4, I think. B-52 flying lower than I suspect it ever would in real life. And good old F-18. Normandy 2.0, demonstrating London and Paris in some nice detail. Corsair again. AGM-130, thank you very much. Good old A-10, I wonder if we're getting our ARC-210 soon. A-4, F-4. Strike Eagle. Kiowa Warrior, oh just give me a moment, I need to drink this one in a little. Let me, ah, yes, there we go. Just look at that thing. Absolutely stunning. And notice that they already have the internal pilots uh, modeled here, which, you know, there, there are aircraft in the game that are released now and still don't have them, so that's a bit sad. Uh, RAF did get some US F-4 Phantoms after the Falklands War. I think they were F-4Es slash Js. Um, do, do, do. Phantom seems a lot further than may have been expected, although we don't get any interior shots. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing the cockpit. Rocket Power GBU designed to ruin anyone's day. I'm not really familiar with that one. I'm going to need to look it up. Uh, John Bloor, uh, da, 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 Rocket Motor, TV Guided. Last stock was used up in 2005. Yeah, yeah. GBU 15. Very exciting. Um, strategic game, logistic component, interest. Yes, actually, um, they, they've had they've had warehousing in the game for some time now, uh, but really the only way to kind of make use of that has been through scripting and systems like Moose, uh, but I, I do suspect that they're going to be expanding upon that. Uh, what's your prediction for the multi-threaded environment launch? Uh, 2023 is what they're saying to expect, although I think they said possibly later in 2023, I don't know. And one of the two pilots is modeled after Burundis. Yeah, I saw that. That was really, really cool. A uh, series of pictures of B-52s passing the carrier under the level of the carrier deck. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Rhino. Oh, yes. Very nice. But yeah, oh, just drink in the Kiowa. So nice. Vigan doing its thing. That's the laser on the gun for the Kiowa. So rather than having a gun sight, you actually just point a laser at the target and pull the trigger. That's kind of fun. F4, Apache. Some World War II stuff. Plane go boom. <laughs> that looked like a sparrow he was launching there. F4 go fast. Mirage F1, we're getting some more variants of that soon. Oh, and that's the, the, the Russian World War II aircraft that I forget the name of. So that's being shown for the first time. More F1 goodness. Boom. Toyota Hilux is getting it. This looks like napalm to me. I think I think this is their way of showing us that we're going to get uh, fire bombs in the in the sim, which is exciting. Really impressive uh, afterburners on the F4. A bit more A4 action. Plane go boom. F1 go whoosh. <laughs> Two thousand C go spinny. And yeah, this more of what looks very much like. Um, Fire bombs to me. They have said that we're getting a lot more um, kind of special effects. They're kind of reworking some of the special effects. 
Okay, and this is where you would expect it's all over. Let's just close the window chat. We're done. We're done here. Let's uh, let me let me get rid of this. But no, 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 we're not done here. We're not done yet. There's more. And this, for, I don't know about any of you, but for me, this was utterly unexpected. I had no clue that the Chinook was coming. This is really exciting for me. Uh, and perhaps, you know, as people were saying, there will be more of a focus on logistics going forward, given that we're going to have all of these transport aircraft. Because, of course, logistics is very important in a war. Just ask Russia. Say no more. Um, yeah, look at that beast. Looking nice. Looking really nice. CH-47 Chinook coming to DCS World. And then that's still not it. There's another little bit. Um, so, you know, don't close your window yet. Don't close your window yet. There's still another little bit. Uh, but this this one's World War II stuff. I have to say I'm not 100% sure what this one's showing off. I think it's a Hellcat. Um, but I guess people who are more knowledgeable in the World War II stuff can uh, probably straighten me out there and tell me exactly what that is. But it, that looked like a Hellcat to me. So, here we go, here we go. Is there a, a Luftwaffe version of the F-4? Uh, oh, there is a Luftwaffe version of the F-4. Why not the RAF? Well, because the RAF one was a different aircraft. Uh, that would be the reason. Uh, RE, the multi-threading, I've seen that they aren't going to use all cores, rather use one or two more in specific tasks. Yeah, that's actually, that's exactly what they said in the newsletter from just a few weeks back. So they explained that initially, at least, they're only going to use two cores. Uh, and so effectively, one core will be simulation, and the other core will be used for graphics. Uh, and I think that alone will be a huge improvement in performance. You don't need, like, it's very, very hard to dynamically split up something like a simulation into multiple cores. Um, at least I would, I don't know how I would do it. Um, so, you know, taking a, a two core approach seems perfectly sensible. Uh, and in combination with Vulcan and DLSS and things like that, will already do a really, really good job. Uh, Stevie B, will you do the Mirage? Of course I will do the Mirage. Uh, Mirage will definitely come. I'll do a tutorial series on that. Um, depends which Mirage you're talking about, though. Are you interested in the 2000C? Or are you interested in the F1? Uh, I actually intend to do series series EZZs on both. So just let me know. Uh, yes. Not sure if it was Napalm. Schnook was a surprise. Yeah, yeah. The Phantom had a bigger body and a spay engine. Yeah, it's quite a different aircraft. Exocet on the F1. Oh my. That's exciting. Uh, 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 uh. London. Da, da, da. That's cool. Yes. Mirage 2000. Very well, Stevie B. Yeah, I'm sure that I can put something together because I would like to cover that one at some point soon. So, um, Yogi, you're asking about DLSS. I'm going to do my kind of simplified version. Um, it's it's a technology from NVIDIA and it's called Deep Learning Super Sampling. I actually had to just look that up. Uh, and basically what it's doing is it's upscaling. So what it allows you to do is say you have a 4K monitor. Rendering a 4K image, especially in something as complex as a flight sim, takes a huge amount of GPU power. So why not render it in 1080 and then use a clever algorithm to upscale your 1080 image to 4K. Your GPU is then doing a lot less work to generate that 4K image. Image quality is not quite as good as a true original 4K image. However, you're getting massively more frames per second. Uh, and the end result is an image that basically looks like 4K. Um, so that's what DLSS is. Allows the game to render at a lower resolution, but then be output at a higher resolution without much of a loss of quality. So, yeah, it's good, basically. Thank you very much, John Blur. Uh, Rick Bish, uh, this news email from today, some of the more noticeable visual effects. Yes, yes, actually, that's what we're, we're going straight on to that. Um, but yeah, Napalm and Max Shock. Hmm, nice. Nice. So yeah, they're basically confirming that they're working on Napalm. Yeah, I hadn't even gotten to that bit yet. Uh, yeah, Brits love power. Uh, Apache from the RAF is also more powerful. Uh, I, I know that that's the case in the H64D model. I don't know if maybe the Americans also operated theirs for the E. I've got no idea. Uh, but yeah, originally the, the British Apaches were more powerful. So 
Moving on, that was the 2023 and beyond. I don't know about you guys, but I found that a lot of fun to watch. It was very, very exciting, and there was a lot of cool uh, new stuff in there. Very nice. So uh, anyway, quick reminder again, uh, we're looking to get this video up to 50 likes. Uh, if you can all smash that like button, and as soon as we reach 50 likes, uh, I will publish a new Black Shark 3 tutorial video much excite. If it happens after the end of this video, that's also fine. I'll publish it whenever we hit 50. Um, mm -mm. Yogi, uh, does all the GPUs have the DLSS capability or is it only some of the newer NVIDIA GPUs? Uh, my understanding is it's only the new NVIDIA GPUs that have RTX. Um, so you're basically looking at like the 2000 series and up. So 2000, 3000, 4000, they can employ DLSS. So there you go. Uh, DCS core improvements, uh, starting with the big one, the one that everyone cares about, multi-threading. Um, so, actually, let me take a quick drink first. Because <laughs> this is going to be a biggie. Uh, multi-threading. Multi-threading has been one of our primary efforts to improve DCS performance, and it is currently in closed beta testing. Initially, two threads, graphical and logical, will be implemented, uh, and once the technology is stable and mature, we plan to expand this number. Large and complex missions, both single-player and server-based, as well as the upcoming dynamic campaigns, will see the most significant performance enhancements. It, actually, one thing that I quickly want to remind everybody is... Um, the game is kind of already multi-threaded in a very minor way. This is going to be an expansion to what the game already does. At the present time, DCS itself consumes a single thread. The audio engine that the game uses consumes a second separate thread, so we're already on two threads. And then many of the third-party modules are using an ex a third thread um, for special features, so things like radar simulation. I know that the Vigan has a completely separate thread that uses for the radar simulation. So in some cases, the game is already on three threads. Um, and basically what uh, Eagle are proposing to do is to split the core game itself into two threads, and then in the future, more, but for now, two. So um, yeah, it's going to be pretty good. Uh, Griff Nizzle, FSR might come down the road, and that's GPU agnostic. Yeah, that's the problem with DLSS. It does require NVIDIA hardware. Back to multi-threading. Our render graph was written from scratch, along with many other subsystems. We now benefit from parallel rendering that schedules interdependent rendering tasks in a correct and optimal order. For example, mirror reflections first then mirrors while running uh, other independent draw calls in parallel. Frame graph, graphic scenes, scene renderer, and scene manager, uh, we unified all other graphic subsystems that permit node embedding in the render graph. This allows us to rapidly experiment with new graphics pipelines and enhance efficiency. The introduction of our render graph will improve DCS efficiency and deliver optimal performance with modern graphics APIs such as Vulkan. <laughs> <laughs> Togs being the cheerleader here. Uh, five more likes. Slam that like button. Woo! You'll get a new video. Um, you'll get an exciting new video. Next, Vulcan API. Implementation of the Vulcan API continues in parallel with the multi-threading effort. Our Vulcan render is integrated with the new render graph, and it benefits from multi-threading by using render graph mechanics of background loading of textures and geometry rendering objects in parallel, terrain streaming, etc. That's kind of cool, terrain streaming. I don't know how the system works right now, but I know that some games, they kind of, they load your terrain like in really, really big tiles. So like as you're flying along, as you approach like the, the boundary of a tile, you get a stutter while it loads in the next one. Uh, terrain streaming, I assume, would mean they're doing something much smarter than that. As a result, many rendering tasks submitted to the graphics card will no longer need to wait for each other and hence be processed simultaneously. In our endeavor to unify DirectX and Vulkan renderers, we have developed a mod state where both backends produce identical results. That's very impressive. Uh, we now have two fully compatible implementations that run under the same API. So you know, they've basically created their own graphics backend, which then can have either DirectX or Vulkan plugged into it. That's really, really clever. 
Uh, this means that all of our applied graphics mods modules, the code that renders our skies, clouds, models, effects, etc., will work the same way on both renderers. To achieve this, we ensured that all of our shaders could be converted into Vulkan format, in addition to implementing a shader converter available from within DCS, permitting to complete uh, to compile any shader on the fly. It is interesting to note that the shader conversion has taken an inordinately large amount of time. I'm not surprised. This is not simple stuff they're undertaking here. This is actually very impressive. Uh, just checking in on chat here. Uh, Yugi, so the multi-threading which ED talk about, is that Vulcan then or something different? What is Vulcan? Uh, so multi-threading um, is not Vulcan. Um, it's the system that allows um, multiple pieces of work to be carried out by the CPU at the same time. Modern CPUs have multiple cores, each core effectively being a miniature CPU, uh, which has its own kind of execution unit and pipeline and all kinds of stuff. Uh, and if you break your work up into multiple threads, they can be running at the same time. So rather than do task one, then do task two, you can be doing you know two tasks at the same time and they can if they're not dependent upon each other they can finish whenever they finish and you don't have to wait around so that's kind of cool uh one more like Ooh, we're very close very close to getting a new black shark 3 video um so where was i the main achievement in 2022 is that DCS now works under Vulkan producing the same visuals as under DirectX. Before I read the rest, I'm going to assume it doesn't perform as well, though, <laughs> and that's what they're going to be working on next. Um, this results in fully transparent for our graphics programmers, allowing them to write the same code for both platforms without the need to have separate code paths for Vulkan and DirectX and beyond. I don't want to understate how smart this is. This is actually a very clever approach they've taken the way they're describing it. Uh, the next step is to provide our graphics programmers with this, uh, with the new Vulkan features compared to DirectX 11. These include new types of shaders, uh, ray tracing, some advanced rendering techniques such as GPU driven rendering is similar. Ray tracing, oof, exciting. 50, we did it chat, welcome, yay! Fantastic, well done everybody. Right, well, uh, as promised, I'm gonna click the button. Uh, but don't, uh, don't go there just yet. <laughs> don't go there just yet. Stay here. This is where the fun is right now. But I have pushed the button. You can all watch that after. And that's a nice tutorial video on Black Shark 3, if you're interested in seeing that. DLSS. Let's see how uh, Eagle have, um, described it. Deep Learning Super Sampling 2.0 is coming to DCS this year. DLSS is a family of real-time deep learning image enhancement upscaling technologies for RTX 20, 30, and 40 series NVIDIA graphics cards. Note NVIDIA. Uh, the goal of this technology is to allow most of the graphics pipeline to run at a lower resolution for increased performance and uh, then infer a higher resolution image from this that contains the same level of detail as, as if the image had been rendered at this higher resolution. I've played around with it and it does work. It really does work. <laughs> James Fenton, 100 likes for a Harrier video. I haven't recorded a Harrier video. <laughs> but I will. I will. I, I like the Harrier very much. Uh, this, uh, da, 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 da. this allows uh, for higher graphical settings and or frame rates for a given output resolution depending on user preference. In addition to DLSS, NVIDIA image scaling will also be available. NIS is a scaling and sharpening tool with an algorithm that uses a six tap filter with four directional scaling and adaptive sharpening filters to boost performance. This is best used for non RTX NVIDIA cards that do not support DLSS. Uh, following the completion of DLSS slash NIS, we will investigate Fidelity FX Super Resolution, otherwise known as FSR, for AMD GPUs, which is effectively doing the same kind of thing. Much excite. Um, <laughs> 50 more likes and Deepak will visit you in your dreams. I don't think anyone wants that. That's uh, that's just going to be creepy. <laughs> oh, and someone took a like away. <laughs> well done. I love it when chat does this. This is good. You've hit your 50. You've got the video. You can all dislike the video now. That's, uh, that's perfectly acceptable. <laughs> you did your job. Thank you. Um, so anyway, uh, Spherical Earth Map. 2022 saw great progress creating the tools and technologies to support a precise spherical Earth map for DCS. The Earth is not a sphere. Someone needs to tell Eagle. Uh, because this map will be based... I'm not saying it's flat, okay? <laughs> Because this map will be based on current day, it will operate independently of the current and future regional maps that allow historic maps such as Korean War II, 
uh, sorry, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and other scenarios. Spherical Earth efforts will continue in 2023. Uh, I would assume, by the way, that Spherical Earth map is going to be basically um, like a kind of, uh, like you have uh, Autogen in older versions of Flight Simulator and, and X-Plane. Uh, like it's going to be a lower fidelity map uh, that you can use. And then, of course, when you fly into the areas which have maps that you've purchased, uh, you're then going to swap it out uh, and be on the kind of higher fidelity terrain uh, with more detail. So this will be kind of fun because it, it will mean that you'll be able to create pretty much any scenario anywhere in the world that you want. Uh, a little bit like games like uh, Command uh, Modern Warfare and things like that. Uh, Command Modern Operation, sorry. Um, weather. Building upon the weather enhancements that were introduced in DCS 2.7, we've been further developing weather to include moving clouds and towering cumulus clouds, uh, more sophisticated atmospheric phenomena. New fog and dust storms are being developed that are integral parts of the volumetric cloud system. The old DCS fog is a separate system that is calculated for a flat Earth. It does, <laughs> it does not consider shadows from the terrain in clouds, so it has limitations. The new fog will be computed for a spherical Earth and takes shadows into account. We also plan to optimize the volume volumetric clouds and increase their basic quality. A separate and complex project currently in development is the Dynamic Cloud Generator, uh, which will then need to be integrated with the dynamic weather systems of low slash high pressure systems and new and involving cloud types. A later task, once this foundation is complete, will be to provide AI line of sight blocking in addition to light direction scattering visibility limitations for the AI. Nice. Very, very nice. Uh, Zigzag, who would like to see an AI RAF Vulcan bomber? Uh, I don't think we're going to see that. Uh, oh, sorry, AI you said. Yes, yes, an AI one would be good. Uh, Pink Floyd and Commonwealth, I'd go for that. <laughs> nice. Uh, Fleer. Uh, 2022 saw significant improvements to how forward-looking infrared is modeled in DCS world. In addition to writing uh, the technology needed to create the characteristics of the camera, a great deal of work is being invested in, into the enhanced thermal signatures of mobile units, map objects, environmental heating and cooling, as well as specific visual effects and artifacts. We will also be adding initial thermal signature conditions for ground units in the mission editor. Welcome, Byron. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> Optional flat Earth map with fully modelled giant space turtle below it, says Nico. <laughs> uh, Mr. Yeti, my worries about a world map is that currently with the smaller maps and multiplayer, it ensures that there is a concentration of activity. Uh, with a world map, pilots will be spread out across the world. Yeah, I think you would still define where your mission is actually taking place, so that, that shouldn't be a problem. quick break for a for a drink <laughs> this is a lot of text uh, eagle dynamics dynamic campaign engine otherwise known as edzy 2022 saw the completion of all major engineering components of the eddce uh, in 2023 we continue development and testing and making improvements to these components as well as adding new features where needed we're also enhancing the mechanics in the campaign editor to avoid issues that might arise when the eddce is used for different maps the next big tasks include transferring mission data between player and AI pilots and creating a specific graphical user interface. Please see our previous newsletter for greater detail on the subject. Also see uh, my previous news stream because I covered it there. Whew. Air traffic control 2022 has focused on the continued development of the supercarrier ATC system. Following its completion, the next focus will be bringing those advancements to airfields. This is certainly no simple task and will require three unique ATC systems for Western modern day, Eastern modern day and World War II. A complete redesign of the modern day Western ATC system is underway. In parallel, modern day Western radio communication for flight, other flights, AWACS and tanker are also being revised. Hey Eagle Dynamics, if you're watching this, um, I would love to be uh, a voice actor for your ATC systems. If you need some British pilot voices or British ATC voices, hit me up, you know where I am. Um, and actually that goes for everybody. Uh, if people are making missions or aircraft or anything, um, I love doing voice acting, it's good fun. I've done some bits and bobs in the past. 
Human animations. Starting with new AH64D pilots in 2022, this work will continue into 2023 to include new infantry and more pilots with more lifelike models and animations. Priority pilot models first include the FA-18C and F-16C pilots. Yes, it'd be very, very good to see those being modelled at last. Uh, we have been missing them for quite some time. Deck Crew and Ground Crew. Starting with the Supercarrier Deck Crew, we continued to develop this feature in 2023. We're now continuing this effort to include Startup and Taxi to Catapult, uh, Deck Crew Logic and Animations. Following the completion of Deck Crew, we then plan to use this technology to create Airfield, Ground Crew and Interactions. What have me and Dot Chuckles been talking about for a couple of years now? That would be absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Eagle Dynamics. Uh, bread. Uh, yes, please. We need deep pack ATC. Oof. Can you do Hamlet? I've got no idea. They need a Canadian ATC named Doug. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I. I could do. I could do ATC. That'd be kind of fun. Uh, you know. Startup approved. Taxi veer Yankee to runway two eight holding point. There you go. There's just a just a small sample. Or uh, alternatively, hey, what are you doing? I, I could include expletives if it was the, the Scottish version. <laughs> um, rally English would be fun, though not realistic. <laughs> oh dear. EDDCE. I personally prefer the Eagle Dynamics Battlefield Assignment and Logistical Leveling System. <laughs> oh dear. Well done. Um, multiple light sources. DCS 2.8 saw great advancements in world lighting, but our efforts continue. The next big lighting advancement will be the introduction of multiple global light sources and no longer only the sun and moon. This will allow more realistic night scenes that account for airfield floodlights, city lights and more. You can see these initial efforts in the Persian Gulf map. Uh, Griff Nizzle, Deep Hacks VA sessions, five hours of saying return pre-contact. <laughs> oh dear, yes. Anyone who's flown the Harrier knows that pain. Uh, voice chat. First introduced in 2019, the free voice chat integrated into DCS allows voice over IP communications based on chat rooms and how you have your aircraft radios configured. 2022 was focused on improving radio communications and stable connections, even over a VPN. In 2023, we continue to develop this feature with realistic radio sounds, effects, and plug and play audio device compatibility. Noise. Uh, visual special effects. Some of the more notable visual effect, ta effect tasks include munitions with airburst fuses. We've not had those. Um, oh no, I guess we have in some cases. Uh, napalm and mach shock cone based on airspeed and weather around the aircraft. <clears throat> Excuse me. Virtual reality. VR is very important for all, and we have heard your concerns regarding performance, and we continue to optimize VR performance for DCS. The primary areas of VR performance improvement are multi-threading and the Vulcan API, particularly for larger missions. We're also reviewing all world level of details. Unit AI improvements. Uh, in 2022, we saw great improvements to the beyond visual range and basic fighter maneuvers AI for our jet aircraft. Moving forward, we now intend to improve multi-ship BVR and air combat maneuvering tactics and appropriate AI tactics for World War II aircraft. For ground units, our primary AI, AI tasks in, include improved pathfinding, that's always gonna be a toughie for AI, and implementing suppression effects for more than just infantry units. That's cool, that's cool. Uh, and then, general flight model for AI aircraft. Whilst the updated BFM AI can make a significant difference in how the AI flies, the general flight model, GFM, will provide imp improved flight dynamics for AI aircraft that better constrain the aircraft to true-to-life performance. Uh, GFM is a significant improvement over the standard flight model, SFM, that is based on drag and thrust characteristic trajectories. The SFM can provide a good centre of gravity trajectory model, but it relies on reliable source data to tune the overall performance. That includes the entire flight envelope, sustained and instantaneous turn rate, energy gain, etc. GFM adds additional short period aircraft movement by adding our base solid body contact models and aerodynamic movements. This results in more realistic control displacements during maneuvers that prove more human-like appearance, that provide more human-like appearances. With GFM, the eye will also encounter wake turbulence, which they've not been subject to up until now. 
Uh, thank you again for your passion and support. We look forward to serving you in the exciting year of 2023. Happy New Year to you and your family. Oh my. Bread, because of poor VR performance, uh, I've spent more on my PC for playing DCS than I've spent on DCS. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. How does DLSS stack with something like ASW motion smoothing? Um, it will work. Um, you can do both at the same time. That's not particularly a problem. Uh, will they interfere with each other? Based on the way the ASW works, I don't think so, actually. Uh, I think you can do both at the same time. Uh, Jay Vogel watched the Fox 3 simulations about VR Advantage a few hours ago. Didn't realise how much better VR was for spotting aircraft. I found that. I found that um, not only for spotting aircraft, but actually for judging your position above the ground, judging your position in a um, formation, all kinds of stuff is just better in VR, in my opinion. Pink Floyd, can you do VR on a 2060 Super, or is that ne not nearly good enough? That's perfectly good enough. I do VR on an old... Titan X Pascal, which is probably about the equivalent of a, I don't know, like a, yeah, about the equivalent of that, actually, probably about a 2060, something very, very similar. Oh my, all this talking, it's getting to my throat. So, um, while I'm coughing and spluttering, let's uh, go ahead and watch another video. Uh, that'll give me a chance to, to relax. Uh, here we have all of the liveries that will be available for the F-15E at launch. Uh, Razbam launched this video just before the stream started. Oh yeah, yeah. Air-to-air -air refueling is easier in VR, for sure. Ah, right, okay. Um, yeah, you've experienced crashing in VR. Yeah, I had to actually add more RAM to my PC to, to make it stable. So here you go. Lots and lots of liveries for the F-15E Strike Eagle. Of course, with it being a Strike Eagle, they mostly look the same. Uh, but the one at the end, the Israeli one, uh, is a, a kind of nice departure. I'm currently on 32 gigabytes, but um, yeah, the more the merrier, I would say. Yes, yes, Rick Bish, the, they, they look the same. <laughs> they mostly look the same. Apart from that one at the end, that Israeli one looks different. Um, but yeah, there will be a lot of options you will to recreate your favorite Strike Eagle squadron in the US Air Force. 50 Shades of Grey. Brilliant. Well done, Pink Floyd. Uh, sorry, John Blur. I read the wrong name at the bottom. <laughs> they could paint them all the same, just release it already. Oh, come on. Let them finish it. Let them get it all nicely done. <laughs> yeah, it's like Ford, isn't it? Um, cool. And then the, the last item that I had on my list, um, there's a, a kind of roundup by Stormbirds of additional bits and bobs that have come out. Uh, Jay Vogel, Deepak, curious about your setup. A desk jockey or sim pit? Um, a desk jockey, because uh, I do all my flying in VR. So because I like to try to reproduce as many different aircraft as possible, I don't uh, have a sim pit of any description. Um, uh, not so is on vacation, so you're not going to see anything from him right now. Stormbirds are excellent. Uh, so yeah, what's my setup? Um, I have a Verpal, basically, for everything. So I've got the, the Verpal combat flight pedals, uh, I've got the the T fifty mongoose uh, stick, and I've got the uh, the original version of the T fifty throttle, also from Verpal. So all my stuff is Verpal. Uh, can we get the one with hind kill mark? Yeah, that's a funny story. <laughs> um, so. In any case, let's have a little look at some of the roundup information that uh, Stormbirds actually posted up here. Um, first thing uh, that they have to talk about is Eagle Dynamics opening remarks for their first 2023 DCS World Weekend news update. So we actually, we already went over all of this. The core improvements, uh, this again is something that we already covered. But here we have a very, very interesting image that Ralphie Dude posted up uh, on Twitter. Let's take a little look at this. Take a look at look at this, everyone, if you want to see exactly what happens here. He's giving a demonstration with an RTX 3090, so quite a high-end card anyway. Max graphics, 
and you can see uh, DLSS off, he was getting 79 frames. This is, by the way, at uh, 1440p. Um, then when he turned on DLSS, max quality and scaling at 1.0, he was getting 90 frames a second, so still getting the full resolution of his screen. Uh, and then when he turned it to 0.5 scale, so uh, like even more aggressive uh, super sampling, uh, he was getting 120 frames a second, which is very, very impressive. And you can see, like, it's most notable in the trees for me, uh, between DLSS off and DLSS on with 1.0 scale, there's really very, very diff little difference in quality here. You know, for me, normal DLSS is just as good as having it off quality-wise, but you can notice that when you get to 0.5, things, you know, these kinds of textures that you have in the trees and in the ground start to look all kind of blurred. Uh, it starts to look like just kind of mottled, blurry shapes. But that's fine because, you know, you're getting an extra 30 frames a second. So, you know, if you don't care about huge amounts of detail in, in the trees, then you would turn this on and just enjoy the extra smoothness, I would say. Um, yeah. This was from Glowing Amram, actually, taken from Reddit. Really? Oh, I didn't realise. It's because it's Ralphie Dude who posted it. Um... Interesting. But yeah, looks really, really good. Um, I think I already used DLSS in um, Escape. Oh, no, actually, I don't have it in Escape from Tarkov. Anyway, it, it's a very, very good feature. I've seen it demonstrated in a few different games, uh, and it looks great. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. Uh, and this was achieved without the multi-core update already in place, and this is without Vulkan as well. So this is literally just NVIDIA's algorithm doing its thing. Uh, you'll get even more performance with the multi-core and with the, the Vulkan, and then if you turn on DLSS uh, on top of that, it's going to be even better. So very, very impressive. Okay, and then we're also starting to get some previews of the Mirage F1EE, which is the next variant which we're going to get in the game from Ergis. Um, so I'm actually, I have to kill the audio because I don't exactly know... Uh, if there's anything uh, copyrighted in here. <clears throat> but uh, we have this fantastic video from our man Spudknocker, as always. Um, and uh, this one's kind of funny. He he styles it as a, a kind of training video for the Royal Daimar Air Force. And um, it's very, very cool. The EE model of the Mirage F1 uh, most notably gains an INS. It has a radar warning receiver uh, and various other kind of small additions to the aircraft. So uh, the main one, of course, being the INS. And he goes through the whole procedure for aligning the INS, how to use the, the waypoints and, and stuff like that. So very, very impressive. Oh yeah, actually, the other main thing it gets is an air-to-air -air refueling probe. So the F1EE is a very, uh, a very nice upgrade to the aircraft. Oh, link to the thread in Discord. Thank you, Mixu. Okay, let me have a little looter. Let me have a quick look here. Oh, you're right. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Mixu. This was indeed Glowing Amram who originally created these images. Uh, I guess it was just um, um, it was just Ralphie dude who was um, popularizing it then. Yeah, that's quite impressive. A really nice improvement there. So uh, yeah, Spudknocker has this really nice video on the uh, the F1 EE. He even demonstrates air-to-air -air refueling. It looks easy enough, although I have to say the probe is hidden by the by the canopy frame, which is not ideal. Um, it would be nice if you'd actually see your probe, um, you know, but you know, as a Harrier pilot, I'm used to it. Uh, does it get IFF? Uh, good question. I have no idea. Doesn't the original one have IFF? Um, yeah, no idea. Couldn't tell you. Uh, zigzag. Non-nuclear Cold War packet is indeed including on its John Pershing Lance Missile System plus more CCP. Oh, okay, okay. Very cool, very cool. Um, so yeah, this is pretty nice. Mirage F1 is looking like a really nice module. I really like the work that Aegis has done both on this and on the C101, which they continue to support. Uh, and the F1 is a very capable aircraft, even in the earlier uh, versions. So you get a really nice autopilot on that uh, and, a, and a pretty decent radar. 
<laughs> it's good to see your probe stay healthy. Yes, yes, people. Very funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, yeah. Yep. Well done, chat. Well done. Um, and what else are we getting demonstrated here? I guess oh, he's, he's showing off the RWR at the end of the video. So that's that's pretty cool. SE does not have IFF. Learned that the hard way. I don't know if the EE has IFF. Um, yeah. Couldn't tell you. I guess it's mostly the same as the CE, so I'd be surprised if it does. But just look at that cockpit. It's absolutely fantastic. Pretty good visibility as well, if you exclude the annoying canopy frame out front. But uh, you know, for this time, that was fairly normal. Um, that was a, a very common feature of, of aircraft during that period. So, um, that's actually uh, basically everything that I had on my list for the news. Um, oh, actually, no, sorry, missed one. <laughs> Casmo makes a case for the C-47. Casmo makes a really, really good video all about the, the C-47, uh, and he talks about what he considers to be a really good way of selling uh, the, the Chinook. I'm actually going to jump straight to it. And he talks about <clears throat> the, the possibility of what he calls the fat cow configuration for the Chinook. Um, so what's a fat cow? The whole concept of the fat cow is that you put a fuel bladder in the back of a, a Chinook along with whatever equipment, uh, ammunition and other supplies that you want. You fly it out to a nice flat area and you're able to set up an immediate FARP. So you basically can have a FARP established just by having a Chinook land somewhere. Uh, and then Apaches, Kiowas, Hueys, whatever other kind of helicopters can fly in there and they can fuel directly off of the Chinook and its big fuel bladder. Uh, and I guess the concept with this being uh, that you can set this FARP up very, very quickly using the Chinook, do all of the refueling, and then leave um, You know, once the, the Chinook has dispensed all of the fuel and, and uh, ammunition. Oh, Jep, uh, take care, sir, take care. Um, so yeah, this is a really, really cool concept, uh, and, and it's an additional mission type for the Chinook. You know, of course, the Chinook, Chinook is already really good for uh, cargo transportation, troop transportation, para jumps, um, doing this, I guess. <laughs> you can carry vehicles with it, uh, all kinds of cool stuff. So it's a very, very capable helicopter. Uh, James Fenton, I will use the Chinook as a cool family camper. You could definitely sleep in the back of a Chinook. Um, so yeah, fat cow configuration. There you go. There's it fueling up some Apaches as well. Really cool idea. Um, really, really cool idea for the Chinook. I don't think we need additional ways to sell the Chinook. You know, look at this thing. You can have so many door gunners on it. You can have guys on the ramp. It can carry troops. It can drop off cargo. It can do sling loading, you know, carry artillery underneath, you know. I think people are going to be interested in the Chinook anyway. And if they expand things like the warehousing and logistics uh, in the sim, uh, and especially if we have things like this um, making a, a difference in the dynamic campaign, I think people will, will fly things like the Chinook and the Hercules. I know people at the VAF are already quite psyched about it and, and will almost certainly fly these aircraft when they become available. John Bloor flew on stream with him uh, yesterday. We chatted about a few things and died a lot, but uh, we should be getting a FARP assets pack with the Kiowa 2. Hmm, that's very exciting. Very, very cool. Yes, I'm very much looking forward to the Kiowa. That's a cool helicopter. There's our F1s doing their thing. So, yes, um, check out Casmo TV's video. Really, really nice one all about the Chinook there. Uh, that's well worth a look. <laughs> cool. Alrighty. So yeah, that's that's all the uh, DCS news topics that I had on my list for this week. Uh, but um, as always, it's time to pimp the VAF. Um, the VAF, or the Virtual Air Force, is a online virtual squadron originally set up by myself and Dot Chuckles. It has an opt-in uh, milsim style approach uh, with the ability to either join us as a freelancer, flying whatever type of aircraft you like uh, whenever you want without any mandatory training, but also with the option of joining one of our internal numbered squadrons and doing mandatory training, type rating and further qualifications. Uh, and we currently have, we're currently running squadrons for the A-10, the Harrier, the F-16, 
the F-18 and the Apache. And probably more to come. So anyone who wants to fly with us or even just hang out and have a chat, come join our Discord. It's noted in the chat to the side. And if you're watching this after the fact, it's in the show notes below. Everybody is welcome, whether you fly with us or not. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, We do uh, training sessions on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. UK time. And we also do a mission every Thursday, also at 8 p.m. UK time. We now also have events in the North American zone as well. So uh, come along if you're from North America. We have two dedicated squadrons so far just for North American pilots, uh, and we have various training and mission times in that zone as well. Oh, bread! you fly none of those modules. The thing is, you don't have to fly uh, in one of our numbered squadrons. You can be a freelancer, so you can literally fly any aircraft you want, uh, and we'll add them to our missions. Oh, thank you very much, Irish Pat. That's very, very kind. Uh, Thank you. And I I absolutely agree. 2023 looks amazing. Uh, It's going to be exciting. So yes, once again, please uh, come and join the Virtual Air Force if you want to do some flying with a fun online group or if you just want to hang out. Uh, either is absolutely fine. Griff Nizzle, Phantom was the star of the show, but i got to say I was pretty cl- uh, chubbed. <laughs> they spent some time talking about the core in the AB video. Yeah. Ooh, James Fenton, love the VAF. We flew off the Invincible on Tuesday. Yes, we did, and that was amazing. Seeing six Harriers, you know, fly the Case 1 uh, recovery and land on HMS Invincible. You just, you don't get sights like that outside of DCS multiplayer. It was absolutely amazing. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Also true. And um, yeah, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. Uh, The numbers just keep going up and up and up. Uh, And if you want to support me even more for a small monthly fee, you can join Deep Hacks Ground Crew. There's a join button below, which you can click. uh, And that's another way of supporting me in creating tutorial content. If you like the kind of stuff that I'm doing, if you like these tutorial series that I create, uh, basically allowing people to, to learn and to fly these aircraft with Without consulting the manuals quite as much because not all of us uh, learn through reading. Uh, many of us are visual learners and find following a video much easier and more compelling. So um, yeah, please consider supporting the channel by becoming a member of Deep Hacks Ground Crew. I really appreci- appreciate the people who already have and a big shout out to, to them right now. Frantic Stone, Mr. Yeti, Griff Nizzle, Chandler Hedgewald, J.R. Walker, Mangash, Channel Wright, Storm Kimbari, Byron Farrow, Leo Netzel, Harish Rajan, and Pink Floyd. Thank you so much, all of you, for your support. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it, honestly. Um, I've been Deepak. I make a new tutorial video every Saturday, and I post it online at 6.30 p.m. UK time. Next week, it's going to be something to do with the Hornet. I did get a shout out to do a carrier recovery. I'll see if I can get my skills up to scratch before doing that one. But um, yeah, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. I salute you, fly safe, and I'll see you all next time. Ta-ta.